Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Dolphin in the solo kingfish trip right there. That's mutton snapper right there, baby. This episode, we're gonna do a catch, clean, and cook on the fish that made trolling famous. That's right, we're gonna get it done with the Mahi Mahi. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Okay, so like I said, we're going over the Mahi Mahi. Went out a few weeks back, hooked into a nice little solo schooly mahi. Very nice mahi, good sized one, not a little peanut. It will bring him home and make a whole meal out of him for the family. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna take you offshore and I'm gonna show you how to get rigged up, pull that bait, and get into the hookup with a mahi. Okay folks, so we had our Boca Inlet this morning. Sun's up a little bit over the horizon. Uh, we're just to the north, not too far north and we're about three to four miles offshore. Currently sitting in just over 600 feet of water. I got some debris all around me. We're gonna get up and start doing some top water trolling. One of our setups for top water trolling is this, a Pen 12H, small conventional reel on a seven foot star rod from the handcrafted series. Our second setup is gonna be this, a little bit of a meteor offshore trolling rod, a Pen International 30, spooled with 30 pound monofilament, on a seven foot AFCO rod. Both of our lures that we are going to start out with are Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammers. Four and a half inch lures on double hook tandem setup. And they're both rigged with 40 pound monofilament leader, about eight to 10 feet of it. All right, so the idea is, is we've got some scattered big weed patches here just off the continental shelf which I call the 550 ledge, which is a ledge that runs from about 550 feet out to 650 feet off the southeast coast of Florida. It gets us into the stream, which is really close down here. First line we're gonna let out, which is gonna be the long line, is gonna be the International 30. Gonna let it out, you know, not too overtly far, but you know, about 150 feet or so. Now, as we're traveling, we're gonna wanna pick up the speed a little bit. Speed is a factor. You can't be going so slow that the fish has time to run up and examine the bait. You've gotta make them chase that bait down. The core theory behind trolling is that you are pursuing a fish that is actively hunting. If they're not actively hunting, they're more than likely not going to strike it anyway. They will run up, look at it, and zoom away. All right, we got enough line out on first line. Set the split. Good to go. So, when you're trolling solo, you're sending out multiple lines. It can be a trick, especially on a small boat. So, what I want to do is I've got my first line set out on my port. I'm going to turn to that line so that it sort of kicks my line almost perpendicular with the boat. And then then I'll be able to let out my second line. All right, so my line is kicked out that way. Now we're almost traveling completely north. We'll just let this line out, you know, about 75, 100 feet, which is the Pen 12H, the smaller of the two conventional reels. All right, we let out enough line on that one. And center click. Good to go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna tether our rods to our boat in case we get a nice fish that hits, have some recoil on the line. We don't want our rods going in the drain. We're riding around 630 feet of water. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the speed. Like I said, we wanna be going between eight and 10 knots. We're gonna cover some ground, hunting for the fish. We started out in an area where there were some big scattered big weed patches. 
nothing hit while we were getting set up and getting underway. So we're gonna keep heading out deeper, see if we can run into some other debris fields, find the fight. Okay, folks, we are up and rolling. We got the Pen 12H, the short line. And we got Pen International 30, doing right around nine knots right now. Essentially what we're doing right now is some blind trolling, looking for life. When you're offshore, you're trolling, you're hunting the ocean. It can be a barren desert until you find signs of life where fish will congregate. So that is catching a mahi in its simplest form. The best way I know of how to catch them, trolling. All right, so now that we've gone and we've caught them, it's time to clean this fish. So we're gonna take them to the fillet table. So when I go to clean a mahi, I like to fillet it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an incision behind his head, right behind the gill plate and the pectoral fin, straight down from the top dorsal side all the way down to the belly. And then I'm gonna outline my fillet, which is tracing around the dorsal fin, then down by the belly, and then I'll make a little incision by the tail. Now, dolphin have a nice fat layer between the flesh and the skin, so their skin is easily peeled back. You don't have to actually skin the fish with a knife. But if you like doing it with a knife, of course, go on ahead and do it. Me personally, it's easier to just yank it on back and get it done. Now that we have the skin removed, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to continue to remove the fillet. What we'll do is we're gonna sort of carve out on the top side, the dorsal side, till we fill the spine. And we're gonna stay as close as we can to the upward pin bones that run off the spine towards this dorsal fin. Once we are running along the spine, we will insert the knife about halfway down his body and we're gonna re start removing the fillet by running the knife towards his tail. Then we'll flip the fish around and we'll do the same thing by inserting the knife and just running it straight up the spine through the rib cage bones all the way to the gill plate. And this will remove your fillet. All right, and now that we have the first side of the fish filleted and the fillet removed, we're gonna repeat this process on the second side. Again, 
We're going to make an incision behind the gill plate and the pectoral fin from the head down. Then we're going to outline the fillet, peel back the skin, and then we're going to carve down the top side till we reach the spine, insert our knife, pull it back towards the fin all the way to remove half of the fillet, and then we're going to flip it around and pull the knife towards the head. And that will remove the second fillet entirely. Okay, so now we have both the fillets removed. It is time to debone this fish. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to remove the rib cage. All you do is you identify where the rib cage starts, which will be at the front of the fillet, right behind what would have been the gill plate, and where it ends, which will be about a quarter of the way down the fish. And you'll want to carve this section out, staying as close to the bones as you can. That way you don't lose much meat. You'll do this to both fillets. Then we are going to remove what are called the lateral line pin bones. On most fish, there's what's called a lateral line. It looks like dark red meat. That is where some pin bones lie in all species of fish. On a dolphin, the lateral line pin bones tend to go about a third of the way back towards his tail. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna carefully trim out a thin line along this dark fleshed lateral line and that will remove the pin bones. You wanna try and be careful and remove all of the bones when filleting. It can really stifle your eating experience when you chomp down on a sharp bone. And now that we have both fillets deboned, we are going to portion them out appropriately. We're gonna make nice sized little chunks that way everybody can get some food. All right, folks, and that is cleaning a mahi in its basic, most broken down elements in simple form that I know of how to explain it by filleting it. Now we're gonna get into my favorite part of catching any fish, which is the cooking and eating. For this episode, I'm gonna go over my secret recipe of how to make what I call crispy mahi parmesan. Okay, so when it comes to preparing any fish, the first thing I like to do is I like to let my fish rest in a brine. This brine is salt, juice of one lemon, some ice, some water. We're gonna mix that all around real good and then we're gonna drop our fresh cut fish right into it. Then we're gonna let it rest for at least a half an hour. Okay, so after the fish has rested in the brine for a half an hour, we're gonna remove it from the brine. We're gonna lay down some paper towels and pat it dry. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bread it. We're gonna start by dipping our fillets and covering them in flour. Then we're going to dip them in an egg wash. My egg wash is simple. It's two eggs and some milk. You mix it around and you'll get a nice evenly coated egg wash on each fillet. And then we're gonna dip it in panko flakes. We're gonna lay these all out on a cutting board covered with some aluminum foil. When we're all done, we're gonna let them rest inside the refrigerator for about another half an hour. All right, now that the fish has rested in the refrigerator for about a half an hour, our breading's good to go, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna pour some vegetable oil in a large frying pan. We're gonna turn it on medium high. Get that nice and good. Now while we're doing this, we're also going to start to boil some water. We're gonna make some fettuccine. And on top of the fettuccine, we're gonna add some nice garlic shrimp. But before we do that, we're gonna start frying up our fish. So we're gonna take about four pieces of our breaded fish and we're gonna dump it in the preheated oil. We're gonna let it cook for about three or four minutes on each side till it gets nice and golden brown. And then we're gonna remove it and we will let the oil drain off onto a paper towel. Now, as we're cooking, we're simultaneously going to boil up the fettuccine. Throw in the pasta into the boiling water and we're gonna let it boil for about 11 to 12 minutes until it's nice and what they call pasta al dente. So now we're approaching towards having all of our fish fried up. We're gonna complete that process. The pasta's boiling. We're getting there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna preheat the oven to 425. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna lay out our fried fillets inside a baking sheet or cake pan, whatever you may have available. Then we're gonna 
put some spoonfuls of nice marinara sauce on top of them. And then we're gonna top it off with some shredded mozzarella cheese. We're gonna put this in the oven and we're gonna bake it till it's nice and golden brown on top. Around this time, our pasta should be getting done. We're gonna remove it, we're gonna strain it out, put some butter and some salt on it so it doesn't stick together and get it nice and ready. While all this is happening, we can't forget to neglect the shrimp that we're going to top our fettuccine with. We put some olive oil in pretty much the same frying pan that we were using to cook the fish after we've rinsed it out. We'll bring that up to medium heat. Then we're gonna throw in a nice heaping tablespoon of garlic. Get that all nice and mixed up, get the aromatics going, it smells great. And we're gonna dump in some shrimp and we're gonna saute the shrimp until they're nice and warm. Now we're gonna pull out the fish from the oven. It's nice golden brown, looking delicious. We've strained our pasta, it's sitting, waiting on the sideline, and our shrimp are done. Now it's time to plate this up and get ready and eat. So to plate this up, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take us a nice portion of this fish and lay it down. Then we're gonna take a good, nice, heaping spoonful of the fettuccine, place it right next to it, nice and neat. Then. We're gonna to top that off with some drizzling, nice garlic shrimp. Grab us a fork, put it right next to it, and it's almost time to eat. Look at that. That looks delicious. This is most definitely one of my favorite preparations of mahi. If you've never had it, I recommend you definitely give it a try. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit about catching a mahi and cooking it up to do what I call crispy mahi parmesan. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.